Kenya, a country famous for its hard-working people, fertile soils, and a tropical climate, which ensures two rainy seasons a year, ideal conditions for a healthy and prosperous agricultural sector. As climate change is making an impact across the continent, African farmers are having to adapt rapidly to new and uncertain conditions. This film will be looking at the ways Kenyan farmers are increasing their climate change resilience by adopting ecological farming. With large-scale farmers focusing on sale and export, it is left to small-scale farmers to produce the bulk of the food that feeds Kenyans. They have different incentives to embark on food production, as Karina Cheng explains. It was 2005. We didn't have anything to eat. And we were struggling, struggling. And we had so many quarrels in the, in the house because of food. And when we started with the tomatoes that, that time, we didn't uh, harvest the way we expected. But the, the much we harvested, put at somewhere, and made us to know that there is money in the, in the farm. From the farming we are doing, we have managed to pay school fees for our children. It's what has sustained us up to this time. Agriculture contributes to the livelihoods and food security of over 80% of the Kenyan population. That is why the country's policy makers are looking to agriculture as the main driver of national development. Irrespective of their motivation to get into farming, farmers are all too familiar with a common set of challenges. In Kenya, the unpredictability of the weather and droughts are by far the most difficult challenges. Kwa wakati ule wa kina mababu zangu, wakati nizaliwa nikiwa mdogo, tofauti ya hanga na sasa, imebadilika kwa kiwango kikubwa. Sababu na kumbuka by the late 90s, eh? e, mbuwa ilikuwa ikinyesha vizuri, ilikuwa inanyesha long one. Watu wanalima, hata kama umelima kuchelewa unamuna. Lakini saa hii, ukichelewa ile tone ya kwanza, Mambo ya meyaribika. Mahali tulikuwa tunalima wakati kulikuwa kunalima nikiwa mdogo. Tumepunguza hiyo shamba sababu unapata mvua inanyesha kidogo. Wezi maliza kulima hii kabla kuja kauka. Mvua ijakatika. Na ikikatika hiyo mara moja, bas, umepoteza. Alafu tena kukua na hii joto kali. Hii joto ndo uwe inaumiza chakula. Manake, siye tipale chini kuna kumekauka. Lakini hii joto ya juu ndo hui nafanya chakula inakata, inazama pale. Lakini hapo awali liku inamaliza hata wiki moja na uoni hata jua kali na mchanga ukauki kwa haraka, chakula ikauki kwa haraka. Kwa hivyo, ikona tofauti sana wakati una ule wakati wa awali. Some farmers have turned to measures tailored to their specific situation in an effort to adapt to climate change. In Mungoma County, Priska Mayende has taken up agroforestry, a method of growing crops in the forest. It has proven to be a measure that has greatly transformed her household as well as her community. We have a CPO called Viriso Farmers Field School, whereby all these farmers, they are also practicing the farming that I'm doing. So we came in as a CPO and we started planting tree. We also involved ourselves in local collection of seeds so that we could even supply to the community. That's why, for example, you see it's raining. Right now it's really raining, but you cannot see water just uh, moving because of the trees. Over in Machakos County, Francisca Mbuli is taking advantage of indigenous knowledge by introducing crops on her farm that have adapted to local climatic conditions over time and are better suited to a changing climate. Kitambo tulikuwa kama nimepanda mahindi nilikuwa na convenience hiyo mahindi nimepanda na nitafuna. 
sasa imebadilika ikawa sasa lazima ni ni ni, ni, ni tafute zile mbengwa ambazo zitaimili ama zita adapt this climate change sababu nikipanda mahindi si tafuna kitu lazima ni changanye mahindi green grams kila kitu sasa nikichanganya hivyo long last afes nitakupata tu kitu si tatoka mbure Tusema kama sasa nimepanda soga. Soga mimi niko na confidence hata kama mvua itanisha tu mbili. Hiyo soga mlazima nifune. Badala ya kupanda mahindi ikae huko nitoke bure. Ndio nimekuja nime kufahamu ya kwamba lazima nipande zile mbegu ambazo zina adapt your climate change. Hata kama ni mvua mbili zinyeshe at least nitoke na kitu kwa shamba badala ya kupanda zile ambazo ati tunasema ndio za zamani na unatoka mbure baadhi ya masomo ambayo wanawafunza wakulima wenzangu kwa vikundi ni maneno ya kufuna maji kutengeneza mitaro kuhifadhi mbegu ambazo ni zile za kienyeji kwa maneno ya kutengeneza compost ambayo ni manua ambayo tunatoa kwa mashe, kwa mboma zetu tunapeleka kwa mashamba ndio tusitumie zile mandawa ambazo zinaharibu zina mchanga pia nawafunza maneno ya kuhifadhi mbegu ambazo tulisoma tuli kutoka kwa, kwa wamama ambao ni wazee ambao tulienda kwao tukawauliza tuka vile kulikuwa kitambo kabla ya climate change wakatuelezea zile mbegu ambazo walikuwa nazo huko kwa mashamba yao sasa wakatuonyeshea mahali ziko wakatupatia kidogo kidogo alafu tukakuja tukazalizana zikakuwa mingi sasa hizo hizo ndizo tunapanda kwa mashamba yetu ndio tusiwe tunapanda zile ambazo ni certified seeds ambazo ambazo asifanye mzuri huku kwetu Most small scale farmers rely entirely on rainfall for their farming needs Sometimes it takes a great amount of resilience to get by Something farmer John Wambua knows all too well The water pan he dug at the beginning of the year stands empty Eh wakati ule wa kwanza tulikuwa tunatayarisha mashamba nilikuwa nimejipanga sababu ya hiyo shamba nilikuwa na nimechimbia shimo pale juu nilikuwa nimeanza kutayarisha shamba hapo karibu na shimo ndio nikipata hiyo maji nianze kunyunyuzia hiyo shamba nilikuwa na maoni ningepanda mvua ikinyesha ningepanda hizi mboga ndio wakati wa kiangazi kama huu manake huku kwetu kuna changamoto ya mboga ningewauzia na nipate pesa na pia wakati huo nilikuwa natayarisha shamba huku chini sababu nilikuwa natarajia ni nitalima na nitavuna lakini sasa wakati mvua ilikosa kabisa sasa ndio maana natumia hata kuchota maji na mitungi huko nikileta nikinyenzie mboga zangu ili sizikauke kama mkulima huwa kawaida mkulima ni kama mfanyabiashara huwezi kufa moyo kama unafanya biashara saa tarajio yangu sijakufa moyo bado nangangana hata kuongezea zaidi every farmer's desire is to get higher yields address food security concerns improve their livelihood and adapt to the difficult climatic conditions which are affecting food production the time i was just doing my own farming before they came uh, the production had really reduced but when i started using this uh, uh, compost manure and also this veni compost the the production also increased organically increasing the fertility of the soil is one of the most successful means to improve productivity the local manure the one from the cows and the sheep is what i used during planting i used one heap of handful in per hole per hole per hole and the outcome is 100% diversifying into different crops is a good strategy to spread risks and build in harvest guarantees i'm starting early early land preparation and uh, improved variety of seeds have gone to high value trees like poppies so the fruits and sell and get at this something for my own consumption and sell and for the household management i'm doing uh, crop diversification so with me i'm growing several so if this one fails i receive the other one. 
they can't fail all. So group diversification has helped me. The water I've tapped, I'm doing irrigation with that. Like uh, when I've tapped the water, the surface run off to my pan. When it gets dry, I'm using money maker to regain my crops. So they are helping me. While the farmers are under pressure to conform to industrial agricultural models being sold across the region, some Kenyans are raising the profile of ecological farming by proudly investing in research and knowledge generation. One such place is Manor House Agricultural Center that is located in Kitale. Since its founding in 1984, the center has provided training and certification in ecological farming. We started off by training uh, adults in short uh, courses lasting one week. But of course, today we have moved to long courses up to diploma. But then we failed. In Kenya, agriculture in primary school is not taught. So the children don't have any knowledge. In fact, they look down upon agriculture and they are the farmers of tomorrow. So with that in mind, we thought there is some, a gap missing and that gap could be filled by us trying to inculcate bio-intensive farming in the young minds so that when they grow up, they can be ambassadors of the ecological farming. I'm the head teacher here in Kitala Township School. Manaus Agricultural Center, I've trained two pupils plus one teacher. And now the skills that they acquired, they are now bringing in and they are assisting other pupils to do the same. When I, when I went to Manaus, I learned about the biotensive agriculture. When I came here in school, I told them about the advantages of agriculture. I've taught them in making the double digging beds because that is hard in making it. I taught my younger brothers and sisters and my parents about the BIA. It's easy, but you must follow well the instructions. Now they are doing this biotensive agriculture because I taught them well and they, they understood it. Sydney taught me about double digging and it is a, it's a good idea. I go even to my home, I, I started doing it. I have two beds for Skuma Wiki and for spinach. If you see in my community, they don't, they don't buy vegetables at centers. They just take their home because they are, I told them how to, how to plant it. And they call even to, to dig for them double digging. The little we have, we have done is really encouraging. Our, our parents outside there, our farmers now, they are changing to use this uh, uh, good method uh, to acquire food. Manahal is doing a noble thing. We are contributing immensely to the well-being of the citizens, to food production even across the borders. We are still a small drop in the ocean, although without that drop the ocean will not be complete. So we would like to reach out and we would like to cover many parts of the country so that people can have healthy food. More than three quarters of all agriculture in Kenya is carried out by small-scale farmers. Their ability to cope with the changing climate is of critical importance to feeding Africa. A large-scale switch to small-scale ecological farming will make farmers more resilient to the changing conditions. It's a transition that needs to happen collectively, who, as they say in Kenya, sticks in a bundle are unbreakable. <laughs>